What is MIMO OFDM? MIMO enables us to use the spatial domain in digital communications by having multiple antennas, and OFDM enables us to use the frequency domain without having complicated equalizers, and it's natural to ask ourselves, can we put the two together? And for videos and information on each of the separate components, you can check out the description below this video, where you'll find links to other videos on the channel. So really, the first thing to say is that there are really lots of flavors of MIMO OFDM. There's not just one MIMO OFDM. So let's start looking at one basic possibility. So here we have our data stream coming in, being changed from serial to parallel, and then each antenna has its own inverse discrete Fourier transform. Sometimes you see inverse fast Fourier transform, that's just a different way of implementing the discrete Fourier transform. And so if you have one OFDM modulator for each antenna, then you have a version of MIMO OFDM. And this serial to parallel, the way we're going to indicate this here is we're going to draw lines for each of the subcarriers for each of the antennas. So here is the input data stream, the serial to parallel. It would take it, that input data stream and put the first bit of data on the first subcarrier for the first antenna, then the next one on the next subcarrier for the next antenna. And I'm using these lines here into the IDFT to indicate the subcarriers in the OFDM. So this is an OFDM block where it takes in a parallel data uh, and converts into time domain serial. And again, for information on this, see the description below. Uh, so then uh, it would go down the serial to parallel. The next data would go into the next antenna in the first subcarrier, then the second subcarrier for that antenna, and so on. And so this is what we would say would be the most basic version. And you'd have, again, one OFDM uh, modulator for each transmit antenna. And this would be the most basic version. And we would call this OFDM spatial multiplexing. So all that's happening here is that the data stream is being put onto each individual subcarrier of each individual antenna. And that is just multiplexing. And then you would use the MIMO richness scattering in the MIMO channel to be able to undo all of that at the receiver. And this works well when the channel is a fully rich channel and we can do multiplexing, spatial multiplexing. But what about the other extreme of MIMO when you have a dominant channel path in your channel? And then you would like to try to do beamforming. So let's consider that just for a minute. So here we have what we would call OFDM direct beamforming. And why do I say direct beamforming? Well, in this case, uh, we just simply have one OFDM modulator, and then we take the output from that and we do a standard beamforming operation on the output of that. So this is another possibility under the banner of MIMO OFDM. But there is a problem with doing this direct beamforming. And it may not be apparent on first glance until we think about how these phases are calculated. And in beamforming, these are the phases that will enable a single sinusoid to be adding up in one particular direction. And they are relative to that sinusoid. But when we're doing OFDM, we are dealing with lots of different sinusoids across a wide bandwidth in, term, in terms of each of these different subcarriers is a sinusoid at a different frequency, of course. So we start to think, well, we're probably going to need a beamformer for each of the subcarriers separately. It may not be the case that one set will work across that wide beam. You can still use this uh, and it will work to a degree because your beams are not going to be extraordinarily narrow. So if, the, uh, if these values are chosen so that they uh, work for, let's say, the center carrier subcarrier, then there's a likelihood that they're going to work for the neighboring subcarriers as well. And, and they'll probably work across that whole spectrum as long as you don't have too many subcarriers across too wide a bandwidth. But if you do start to do your OFDM over a wider bandwidth, you will need to do a different type of beamforming, not this one. So let's look at that. So here is what we might look at now, where we're going to have a separate beamformer for each of the subcarriers. 
to really make that beam forming specific for that subcarrier. So now we, we have serial to parallel between each of the subcarriers before we go into the OFDM modulators. So let's think about what happens here. The data comes in, the serial to parallel, the first one goes on to the first, uh, into the first beam former, which will be going out on the first subcarrier of each of the antennas. So now we, uh, if I draw some lines here, we come into a beam former, and the first output from the beam former goes into the first subcarrier for the first antenna, and the second output from the beam former, which matches up to these phases over here, so the second output from the beam former with the second phase is going to now go into the second antenna. Now everything that comes out of this beamformer is going into the first subcarrier of OFDM. So now the third beamforming output goes into the third one and so on, and the last beamforming output goes to the last antenna. Uh, don't forget, it's the first subcarrier of the last antenna. So this is how we're going to be doing beamforming on a per subcarrier basis. So you can see this beamformer here has beamformed the first subcarrier on each of the antennas. So let's draw, draw the lines in here for the second beamformer, for example. The first output from the second beamformer is going to the first antenna, and the second beamformer is for the second subcarrier, so it goes into subcarrier number two. The second output from this beamformer is going to the second antenna, and as, as we say, all of the outputs from this beamformer are going into subcarrier number two. And of course, the last one goes into the last uh, beam the, the last antenna and but it's still subcarrier number two and just to complete the picture here uh, the last beam former here uh, the, the first output goes up to the first antenna in the last subcarrier the second one to the second antenna and the last one to the last one in the last subcarrier so hopefully you can see here now why this is called multi-carrier beam forming each of the carriers so this is the first carrier on the first antenna. Each of those ones comes from this beam former. The second carrier on each of the antennas came from the second beam former. And the last carrier on each of the antennas came from the last beam former. So this is now uh, something that's going to be more specific. Each of the beams on each of the subcarriers will be accurately calculated with its own uh, phases, not just one set of phases across all of the subcarriers. So the last now we can see we're getting more general here and more complicated too, but the last most general MIMO OFDM scenario is here where we have a general what's called space, time and frequency encoder. So on the right hand side you can still see it has the same form as over here and in fact also as the, the first one up here where you have a OFDM modulator for each of the antennas. Um, and now though, we are going to allow ourselves to be even more general in what we do before we go into those OFDM modulators. So over here, we were doing uh, serial to parallel and then beam forming, but now we could be even more general than here. So for example, we could do MIMO singular value decomposition uh, pre-coding, if we knew what the channel was. Uh, we could do, um, a multi-channel, what we call multi-channel beam forming in here. This was multi-carrier, but we could do multi-channel where if we know about the, the, again, if we know about the channel, we can form different beams in different directions specific for the channel. Uh, and um, if multiple of them, multi-channel, or we could do zero forcing pre-coding uh, in this box here, again, before we go into the OFDM modulators. So this is the most general case of MIMO OFDM. So if this video has helped you, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, check out the description below, as I've mentioned, where there's lots more videos and links to other related videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.